Welcome to another Node Red video, and this video is a continuation of an earlier video I did um, working with Node Red buffers, and where we looked at working with text data and we looked at character encoding schemes. And in this video, we're going to concentrate on uh, integers and, and floats, and we're going to look at how we deal with integers and floats. And this arises uh, when you're actually dealing with uh, machines, uh, they might send their, their data to you as an integer or as a floats or as a mixture of integers and floats and you have to decode that data and conversely you need, might need to send data to those machines and you need to send integer data and float data and we're going to look at how you do that. Now just a quick recap, uh, data stored on computers and transferred across the network on, on, between computers is stored as a sequence of bytes and a byte is 8 bits now early computers use 16 bits to represent an inch and 32 bits uh, for a floating point number today computers use much larger representations 64 bits is common but the process is the same so here we are this is a 16 bit number it's decimal 259 and we've got here the most significant bit is here and this is a one which is actually represents 256 and the lowest significant bit is sorry bit is byte is here which is three so 256 plus three is uh, 259 now i've chosen and in the flow examples that you'll see i've chosen very simple numbers 259 we can actually see it very very easily and if i was to look at this in the debug screen I would actually just see 1 and 3 and if it was 260 I'd see 1 and 4 very very easy to pick out so which is why I've chosen these numbers so when you transmit this data on a network you've got a choice do you use transmit the most significant bit first or do you transmit the least significant bit first and the same as when you store this if you store this on a, on a computer an 8-bit computer you need to decide which you're going to store first the most significant bit or the least significant bit now this is known as uh, endianness, if I said that correctly, it's a funny funny word. And we have two forms, we have big and we have little. Now if you send the most significant byte or store the most significant byte first, it's big endianness. And if you do the opposite, store or send the least significant byte first, then it's known as little endianness. Now on networks, uh, the standard is big endiness, so we send the most significant byte first. So when we re receive that data, we, we receive that data in byte buffers, we have to store it and then we have to decode it. We have to know whether it's set, sent as big endiness or little endiness so we can decode it. And now we're going to look at some flows and we're going to look at uh, sending this data and decoding this data. Okay, this is the flow. It consists of a series of demos and the first one is integer and what we're going to do in this flow here is we're going to convert an integer into a buffer and we're going to display that buffer and then we're going to convert a buffer into an integer and we're going to display the integer and notice I've given the debug nodes a name to make it actually easier to distinguish between the output of this and the output of this so let's kick it off and inject 259 into this function node which converts the integer into a buffer and displays it there it is there and then we feed the buffer back into the other function node which converts the buffer back into an integer and displays it there you can see it there so let's take a quick look at these function nodes and first thing we do is we allocate our buffer which is two remember that an integer is taking two bytes and then we just use the buffer uh, write integer uh, to write the integer into the buffer. And notice we're using 16 bits and we're using big endiness here. You can see it here. So it's write integer 16BE, um, the payload, which is an integer, and that writes that into the buffer. And then all we do then is we put the buffer back into the payload so we can send it back out again. And we display it. Sorry, we display it there and we send it on into this node here which then takes the incoming buffer in the payload then uses the read function the read integer 16 be again big endiness and converts the buffer now into a integer uh, we again put it into the payload and then we return it and it gets displayed here this time now normally what would happen here is you would actually be sending this integer, convert it into a buffer, and then sending it out somewhere, maybe on MQTT. 
and conversely here we'd be receiving data in it would be a buffer and we'd be converting it in, into an integer or, or a float or something and displaying it so next one is a float and there's a float and we inject it into the this buffer sorry we inject it into this function here and it does the same as we saw previously except it converts it into, into a, a float buffer and then we take the output of that and feed the buffer into here and we convert it back into a float and just clear that and let's see it so there's the buffer remember remember a float is four bytes so we can see four bytes here and coming out of this one here is the float again which is 259.2 you can see it here so let's have a look at the function and it looks very very similar to the previous function except this time we're allocating four bytes because the float is four bytes long and we use the write float function again be for big endiness and then we return the buffer in the payload there and then opposite here we bring in the buffer we use the read float to actually convert the the buffer into a floating pipe number and again we put it into the payload and we return it and that's what you see coming out of here okay so that's how to read and write integers and floats um, using buffers so if we move down here what we're going to do now is more real life is we're actually going to send the, the data over MQTT and we're going to receive the data via MQTT and we're going to display it so this timestamp here is just for starting the flow so I'm going to start the flow and we'll have a look at the output now the output here decoded buffer data is that here and what it is is a array of integers and you can see them here 259, 260, 261 now I chose these deliberately so they'll be easy to recognize and remember 259 as a buffer is 1 and 3 260 as a buffer is 1 and 4 you can see them up here very very clearly so what's happening here in the first node here is I'm creating a buffer to send over MQTT and there's the array of integers and then I again use the the right buffer the right integer to actually create the buffer and I have to loop through this uh, this array and I have to create the the buffer now the buffer is 10 bytes long because we've got five integers and each integer is two bytes and then when I've got the buffer object I put the buffer object in the payload and I return it and then that buffer object which is here gets sent over MQTT and you can see message.payload this is the message.payload that's what's been sent to the MQTT node and that's what's been sent to line now coming in to the MQTT node I have a buffer object and you can see that because I'm displaying it here that's what's coming into here I send that buffer data into the decode buffer and the decode buffer does the opposite of the coding buffer it loops through the buffer and for each two bytes to convert it into an integer using the read what we saw earlier and then again it puts it into the payload and, and returns it and that's what we're seeing out here we're seeing a, a, an array of integers coming out of here so let's move down to our last example and what we've got here is again a timestamp to kick off the flow and we've got a function node and what this function node is doing is creating a buffer object consisting of an integer and a float so we've got a a combination buffer integer and float and then we've got the opposite function node that decodes that buffer so it's decoding it back from an integer to a, a float and we've got a couple of debug nodes to display that so let's try it you can see here there's the buffer and remember a float is four and integer is two so we've actually got six by using that buffer one two three four five six and the float the integer is 259 and the float is 260.50 and so that you can see that here again our 1 and 3 259 and there is our float and that's a typical thing you'll be doing in real life you'll be receiving data uh, maybe across MQT maybe maybe UDP
and you'll be taking that data into a buffer and you'd be splitting it up into integers, floats and maybe strings. So let's have a look at the function we use to actually create the buffer. So we allocate six. We start off with an integer and a float and then we use the write. So we write the integer 16 bits and a zero. This, now this means we start at zero. So we start at zero position in the buffer and we write our integer. And then we write our float. This time we start at position two, which is this one here. And we write our float into the buffer. So we finish up with the integer plus the float. And then again, we put the buffer into the payload and we return it. And we do the opposite here. We get in our buffer. And this time we read into a, which is the integer. We read the integer 16 bit and we start at position zero. So we take in these two and we're converting it into an integer, which goes to 259. And then we do the float, which starts at position 2, which is that one there, and it reads it into variable b, which is the, the float number. And then all we do then is we put it into a payload so we can print it out, and that's what you're seeing there, and we return it. Okay, that brings us to the, the end of the video and I hope it's helped you understanding what buffers are and how to convert from buffers to strings, buffers to integers and buffers to floats and conversely how to convert a float, an integer and strings from the previous video into a buffer so you can send it over uh, UDP, MQTT or whatever transport you'd like. Now, if you've got any comments on the video then please leave them below. If you like the video then click on the like button below and if you want to get notified of new videos on the channel, you can always subscribe. And if you do use social media, uh, feel free to share it. Until the next time, goodbye.